The topic is prognosis. We all know that prognosis is one of the important or the integral part of periodontal therapy. Now, before you can plan a treatment plan for the patient, you always need to determine the prognosis for the patients. Now, once the prognosis always fits into the uh, before di uh, after diagnosis and before treatment planning. Now, why is it so important? Is it's one of the, as, as I've already told, it is one of the integral part of periodontal therapy and then it influences your treatment planning. So your treatment planning will always go in relation with your prognosis. Now how do we define prognosis? A prognosis can be defined as a prediction of the probable course, duration and outcome of the disease based on the general knowledge of the associated, uh, uh, based on the general knowledge of the pathogenesis of the disease and the presence of risk factors associated with the disease. If you see, if you want to know what is the significance of prognosis, now the significance of prognosis can be related to the patient, it can be related to the clinician and even the insurance companies. Now how is it related or how is it important for the patients? Now patients will have a lot of questions in their mind. Is this treatment going to be successful? Can I save my tooth? All these will be the various treatment or uh, the doubts that the patient would be having in order to, uh, d uh, when he comes to a clinician. So how do we answer this? The answer, answers to all these questions will come only if you know the prognosis or the clinician knows whether he can give a proper prognosis to the individual. Then comes the clinical factors or the clinician, uh, the significance of prognosis on the clinician. Now the prognosis for the clinician can be determined as a diagnosis, diagnostic prognosis, as a prosthetic prognosis and as a therapeutic prognosis. When you see the diagnostic prognosis, it means to say the prognosis can be uh, or it, it can be incorporated in diagnosing a periodontal disease. For example, it determines whether the evaluation of the generalized status of the patient. If the patient is able to uh, you, there are a lot of factors which determine whether you can, uh, uh, you know, determine the prognosis of that particular patient. For example, uh, you know that the patient uh, age, now when you take uh, the, into consideration the age of the patient, you can always determine it and he's suffering from a chronic form of periodontitis. You know that chronic periodontitis is most often seen in an elderly aged individuals. So, if it is age related and a chronic form of periodontitis, you know that your, uh, the prognosis for such individuals will be better when compared to the form of aggressive form of periodontitis, wherein at a very younger age, the patient loses all his or her teeth, right? So the prognosis would always be better for an elderly individual when compared to a young individual. So this way, it also helps in diagnosis or uh, helping us in determining whether we will be able to save the tooth or not. Now coming to the prosthetic or the therapeutic, it helps in planning a treatment for that particular patient. For example, you want to plan or design a proper treatment plan for the patient. Uh, let's take an aggressive periodontitis case. Okay, you know the uh, you've, you've, you've checked the or you've examined the patient and then you've evaluated all the signs and symptoms of the disease and then you have diagnosed the disease. Now you want to know what kind of a prognosis uh, that you want to or what kind of a treatment plan that you want to give depending on whether you can save that particular tooth or not. Right? So you first you determine the prognosis and then put forward your treatment planning. If you can't save the tooth, then there's no point of giving a treatment plan or thinking that you can save the tooth. So always determine your prognosis. Now there's something called as uh, a provisional prognosis and there is something called as a permanent prognosis. Now what is a provisional prognosis? Provisional prognosis is you determine, suppose uh, there is a lot of calculus in the mouth, okay? Uh, and uh, you're not able to identify whether you can uh, whether the depth of a periodontal pocket. So what do you do? You do the phase one therapy, that is you do a proper scaling and root planing and then you wait for a certain period of time and then you re-evaluate the status of the patient or the periodontal status and you determine whether that particular tooth can be saved or not. Probably, uh, suppose a grade two mobile tooth. Okay, the patient has a grade two mobility with respect to one one. Okay, now you want to determine, you, you, you're confused whether you have to save the tooth because it's an anterior tooth, right? Whether you should save the tooth because it has grade 2 mobility, a lot of bone loss, or whether you want to remove or extract the tooth and probably think of placing an implant. So now you need to wait for a period of time. So you are in a little dilemma. So for that, for in those kind of situations, what do you do? You do the first phase of treatment, that is your phase 1 therapy, and then you wait for a period of time, and then you reevaluate the state 
status of that tooth. Probably the prognosis might be better, probably the, some kind of a regeneration would happen or probably it can worsen. Okay, then you can decide what would be your treatment plan. So as for the clinician, for the effective treatment plan, all these factors will play. What is risk? Now you need to differentiate between risk and prognosis. There is a big difference between risk and there is a big difference between prognosis. What is risk? You know what are risk factors. That is, their risk factors are already present within the individual and then the individual is getting prone to the disease. Right? So, uh, basically, as uh, you know smoking, Smoking is one of the risk factors for lung cancer, it's more one of the risk factors for periodontal diseases, it's one of the risk factors for causing any form of uh, uh, lung diseases, okay? Now, when you already know that the, the uh, smoking is a risk factor for that particular disease, you are uh, able to determine that the patient whether he will develop the disease or not. Though it is not the etiological factor, it is he is just at a risk of developing the disease okay he has high chances of developing the disease now, what are the prognostic factors the prognostic factors are nothing but predictable factors that help you in disease determining whether the disease will progress or not okay now that will uh, be covering a little later what are the prognostic factors let's go into the classification of prognosis now it was McGuire and Nunn in 1991 and 1996 who classified prognosis as excellent prognosis, good prognosis, fair prognosis, poor prognosis, and then hopeless, uh, questionable and hopeless prognosis. Now let's see each one. When you say excellent prognosis, it means to say that there is no bone loss, the excellent gingival condition, and then there is a good patient cooperation, and then no systemic or environmental risk factors. So I repeat, when you have to call the patient having an excellent prognosis, means to say the patient has not giving you an excellent cooperation. He's cooperating with you to the uh, best of his ability. And then the status of the gingiva is excellent. There's no inflammation. And then there's no sign that no clinical signs of inflammation. Okay, the patient is listening to you. He's getting motivated by you. He's gonna, you know that the patient is gonna cooperate with you. And you don't see any kind of a bone loss in a radiograph. And then there's no environmental or there are no systemic factors. Now, when do you call it as a good prognosis? You call it as a good prognosis when you have certain uh, criteria or the factors are at an adequate amount. For example, you have adequate remaining bone height, you have adequate amount of bone support, and then you have adequate control of your local factors. You have, you know that the patient can maintain to an adequate level, he can maintain the oral hygiene. And then you know that the patient can adequately cooperate with you. Means he, co he will cooperate with you, though not to an excellent level, but at least he has with an adequacy, he can cooperate with you. And there is no systemic or environmental factors. Now let's see what are the factors that influence your, uh, to determine it as a fair prognosis. The first one would be probably grade one furcation. Okay, and then some amount of tooth mobility. So if the patient is having some amount of tooth mobility, grade one percussion involvement, and then adequate maintenance. Okay, acceptable patient cooperation. You, he will listen to you. He will like, okay, I will do it. But whether he'll, he'll, he, the patient will just listen to you. Okay. So you have an acceptable kind of a patient cooperation. But you have the involvement of systemic and environmental factors here. But then they are under control. So the, the influence of the factors are limited. So you are limited environmental and systemic factors. You have less than adequate bone support. In the good prognosis, you saw there is an adequate support of bone, whereas in fair, it is changing to less than adequate pro, uh, bone support. Apart from that, there is some kind of a tooth mobility and grade 1 percussion involvement. If you see poor prognosis, now the bone loss is increasing. So there is moderate to advanced bone loss. Okay. Apart from that, the furcation grades are also increasing from grade 1 to grade 2 furcation. The tooth mobility is increasing from grade 1 to grade 2 mobility or probably grade 3 mobility. Okay. The, the, the areas are becoming very difficult to maintain. Obviously, you have too much of mobility, furcation involvements. These all these areas become inaccessible to oral hygiene maintenance. Apart from that, the patient is also having systemic and and environmental factors okay probably they are uncontrolled probably the patient is having an uncontrolled diabetes mellitus so he's at a st poor state of prognosis right 
Now, when you see the questionable prognosis, when do you say it is questionable prognosis? It means to say when there is uncontrolled systemic and environmental factors, inaccessible areas, and then increased grade of tooth mobility, probably grade 3 mobility, grade 2 to grade 3 for occasion involvement, and there is advanced bone loss. Okay? When you say it hopeless, when you feel that there is no hope at all to save the tooth. If all the factors are at a compromised state. Non-maintainable areas, advanced bone loss, severe to advanced bone loss, and then extractions. Yes, hopeless. When you, when you give a tooth as a hopeless prognosis, it means to say that you have to go for extraction. Right. So extractions are indicated and then uncontrolled uh, systemic or environmental factors. Now there's another uh, classification. You can also classify your prognosis as individual prognosis and overall prognosis. When you say individual prognosis, it means to say you're giving prognosis for that individual tooth. Okay. Whereas overall prognosis, it means to say it for the overall dentition. Okay. Most of the time students get confused between this overall and individual prognosis and they land up giving the same kind of a prognosis for both. But then it means to say when you say individual tooth, suppose uh, suppose you have grade 1 forcation in 4-6, you have uh, mobility in 3-1 and then you have grade 2 mobility in 3-1 and then you have... Uh, a margin uh, gingival recession in about uh, class one uh, gingival recession in about uh, uh, you know uh, four five so now your individual tooth prognosis would be and the rest of the other teeth are normal so what would be your individual prognosis your individual prognosis would be with respect to okay with respect to three one what is the prognosis with respect to the four six what is prognosis and with respect to four five what is prognosis Okay, so that would be individual prognosis. But when you see overall, it means to say for the entire dentition. Though only three teeth are involved with the disease, yet the other teeth are in a good condition. So your overall prognosis would be for the entire dentition. Now let's go into detail. Uh, so now we've already discussed what is provisional prognosis, right? So I wouldn't go uh, into detail with this. Now what are the factors that affect your individual and overall prognosis? Now first see what are the pro uh, factors influencing your individual prognosis. I told you individual prognosis meaning for that particular tooth you are giving a prognosis. The factors that determine are the percentage of bone loss. Whether it is mild, moderate or advanced bone loss. Okay, And then probing depth. Whether you have shallow pockets or deep pockets. And then distribution and the type of bone loss. Whether you have an angular bone loss or whether you have a horizontal pattern of bone loss. If you have a vertical bone loss or an angular bone loss, whether it is a one wall defect, two wall defect or a three wall defect. Okay. All these factors will determine. And even your pockets, whether you have a suprabony pocket or an infrabony pocket, you have a simple pocket, you have a combined pocket or you have a complex pocket. So now these are also going to determine your prognosis. Apart from that, presence and severity of infection. How severe is the infection? Probably the patient is having abscess, okay, multiple abscesses. And then he's having uh, 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 furcation involvement. So presence of uh, severity of furcation with what grade of furcation is involved. Okay, and then mobility. What grade of mobility is involved? So that also will change your prognosis. So all these are the factors which have an individual role in determining your individual tooth prognosis. Apart from that, your crown root ratio. Okay, now if you want to do, suppose for example, you have a fractured tooth. Okay, it's almost fractured at the level of your gingiva. And it's a maxillary central incisors. You know central incisors are single rooted teeth. Okay. And most approximately the length of a, a maxillary central incisor root would be maybe uh, 13 or maybe less than 13 millimeters, maybe around 11 to 12 millimeters. Yes, it would be around somewhere around 11 to 12 millimeters. Now entire crown is fractured exactly at the uh, gingival margin. Now the, the endodontist is referred to you and he says that I have to do a root canal therapy and I want to place a post and core and then can you increase the uh, uh, root, uh, the crown height for me. Okay, so you want to do, this. he sends you, he refers it to a periodontist for a crown lengthening procedure or he refers to a dentist for a crown lengthening procedure. So how do you do? If your crown to root ratio is not adequate, do you think your root will take in a lot of uh, uh, pressure when you're going to place a crown, especially your central incisor? No. So you have to consider the crown root ratio for that particular tooth, whether you can save the tooth or whether 
means you can save the tooth and go ahead with the treatment of post and core or whether you have to extract it and give do some other treatment okay apart from that the root form how's the root form of the whether it's a long root short root okay whether it's a single rooted tooth multi rooted tooth and then the pulpal involvement okay that is if it is if there's already an endodontic problem whether a periodontal therapy is needed or not or whether you can save the tooth by doing an endodontic treatment and a periodontal treatment and then caries again if you have subgingival caries or root caries can you save this particular tooth and then tooth position and your occlusal relationship in the arch and then knowledge and the skill of clinician so all these factors will determine your individual tooth prognosis what are the factors which determine your overall prognosis your age the medical status of the individual individual tooth prognosis again local factors rate of disease progression patient cooperation and then economic consideration now a patient comes to you with a low socio economic status and then you give him a treatment plan of an implant do you think he can afford it no so you need to consider even the socio economic status of the patient then knowledge and the ability of the dentist okay and the etiological factors are also important in considering your overall prognosis suppose your etiological factors are just the local factors probably you can just do elimination of the local factors if there is some systemic involvement then you have to treat the systemic involvement then oral habits and compulsions now let's go in detail about each one what are the overall clinical you can categorize these overall factors as overall clinical factors overall systemic and environmental factors local factors and prosthetic and restorative factors let's see what are the overall clinical factors patient's age disease severity plaque control and patient compliance and then systemic or environmental factors include smoking systemic diseases genetic factors and stress local factors are plaque and calculus subgingival restorations and then anatomic factors and then mobility whereas the prosthetic or restorative factors for individual uh, for your overall prognosis include your abutment selection caries non vital teeth and root resorption now let's go in detail about each of the overall factors now your age now age you as i told you before that an older individual has a better prognosis when compared to a younger individual you know that in a younger individual the 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 time it took for the disease to progress and produce its clinical signs and symptoms or for the destruction to occur what was, was at a very less age okay so it means to say that within a short period of time there has been rapid destruction in a younger individual therefore the prognosis of that uh, individual would be poor now when when you say when you take into consideration the disease severity for the overall prognosis now previous history of periodontal disease again compromises your uh, prognosis right so it makes the it's basically an indicator for future susceptibility of the patient now what are the variables for determining patient's history of periodontal disease the pocket depth loss of attachment the degree of bone loss and the type of bony defect so if there is a steady progression that means to say definitely the prognosis is going to be unfavorable if you can arrest the disease then the prognosis probably would be favorable according to you now what are the effects of uh, probing depth on your uh, overall prognosis the increased probing what's going to happen this going to be it means to say it's a very negative indicator right the probing depth is going on constantly increasing that means to say the disease is also progressing pockets around single rooted teeth they are easier to eliminate pockets around multi rooted teeth it's difficult to eliminate okay and they pose a special problem especially if the multi rooted tooth is involved with the pocket and a forcation involvement the most amenable to pocket to treatment will be the the pocket which is most amenable for periodontal treatment would have a best or a favorable prognosis what about cal that is clinical attachment level it represents the best clinical measure of the disease severity in terms of loss of tooth support okay recording clinical attachment level will help you in letting you know whether the periodontal status is stable or not 
Now, according to the CAL, that is your clinical attachment loss, you can classify your periodontal, chronic periodontitis into slight, moderate and severe, right? Now, slight would be just 1 to 2 millimeter of clinical attachment loss and then moderate would be 3 to 4 millimeters and then severe would be greater than or equal to 5 millimeters. What is the importance of radiographs in determining prognosis? The radiographic determination of severity of disease. You know that radiographs will show only what has already happened, right? It will show only the past changes. It will not show the present clinical scenario. So whatever has happened is only seen. So the present, what is happening right now is not seen in a radiograph. So the greater the bone loss, poorer would be the prognosis. As the bone loss exceeds more than 50%, then again, the prognosis would become unfavorable. Again, depending on the type of bone loss that you can interpret in a radiograph, horizontal bone loss, the prognosis is depending on the height of bone remaining. Okay, but if you have a vertical pattern of bone loss, again, the height also matters and even the type of bony defect, whether it's a one wall, two wall or a three wall defects matters for prognosis. A one wall defect always has a poor prognosis when compared to your two to three wall. Because your two to three wall defects can always have a better prognosis. Why? Because you can treat your two to three wall defects using regenerative pro uh, procedures. How about plaque control and patient compliance? Now, if the patient listens to you, he gets motivated by you and he will listen to you. You call him at that particular point of time, he will come to you for treatment. You call him at that another particular point of time he, for a follow-up, he will come to you. So if the compliance, patient compliance is good and he is listening to you, then probably the prognosis would be more favorable when compared to a non-compliant patient. Okay? And then plaque control. It is one of the single most important factor in the treatment of periodontal diseases. The long-term success of periodontal treatment or periodontal therapy always depends on your plaque control. If the patient has a good ability to plaque uh, to maintain his oral hygiene, then his prognosis would be good. So highly motivated and a cooperative uh, patient would have a better or a favorable prognosis when compared to a non unmotivated or a uncooperative patient. Now to conclude, I, I, I would like to say that the degree with, to which the patient follows your therapeutic recommendations and then the degree to which he follows your motivation, he, he, he understands the importance of oral hygiene and the commitment towards the oral hygiene and to the commitment towards the dentist would will uh, uh, favor the patient in uh, succeeding his uh, or maintaining his dentition. That would end your prognosis. Thank you.